Hey guys, what's the crack? So we're gonna do a mind map now on moments. So moments is part of the mechanics topic. And it's one that people have quite a lot of bother about, especially when you look at moments at an angle. So it's going to mind map now going for in detail and some example questions. So moments, the first thing you know about moments is that the equation moments is always equal to force multiplied by distance. We need to remember the distance is always the perpendicular direction. So remember, it has to be at right angles to the force. Okay, it's not this parallel direction like work done. Moments is the perpendicular direction. So the unit of moments, if it's a force, which measures in newtons, times the distance, which is a meter, your unit of moment is then just your newton meter. Okay, when we do moments questions, you should always think about things being equilibrium. And a common question is to state two factors, two, two points of why the system is in equilibrium. And the two things it has to obey if it's in equilibrium is it must obey linear equilibrium and it also must obey rotational equilibrium. Okay, so it's the two things it has to obey if it's actually in equilibrium. You can't just state in your exam the two things are linear and rotational equilibrium. You have to explain to the marker, the examiner, what they actually are. So what linear equilibrium is, is that easiest way to learn it, the fastest, the quickest sentence, is just that the vector sum of the forces is zero. Okay, so that's what you write in your test. But what it really means is basically just that all the upward forces equals all the downward forces. However, you can't write that in the AQA paper, they're not getting marks for it. You want to say that linear equilibrium is the vector sum of the forces is zero. Okay, so what it really means though when you're doing your math is you think that all the up has to equal all the down. Rotational equilibrium is when you're thinking about, if you think about a seesaw, so you think about your seesaw. What it means is all the moments in your clockwise direction must equal all of your moments in your anti-clockwise direction. And the fast way to write that is just all the moments in the clockwise direction must equal all the moments in the anti-clockwise direction. However, when you write your definition in your exam, you have to say that it's the sum. Okay, so the sum, which means that you're adding up lots of different moments that could be there. So for example, if you have this moment and I have another moment going there, it's the sum of them, the sum of the clockwise moments. So the sum of the clockwise moments must equal the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about any point. Okay, so that's your two conditions. Normally it's kind of like a two marker. Okay, so what we're going to now is some examples of this. So let's say I just have a nice easy example. So let's just say we have our seesaw and there's our pivot, the point that it's supported by. And let's say 0 0.15 meters away from the pivot, we're going to have a force of three newtons. Okay. And let's say I want this to be balanced. So I want to know what force am I going to put here that's 0 0.3 meters away. Okay. So what force put there at 0 0.3 meters away? So to calculate this force, okay, it's kind of like a GCSE example just to get us started. We know that the moments in our anti-clockwise direction must be equal to our moments in our clockwise direction. So if I look about this pivot, this free newton force is trying to pull my finger, trying to pull this point in that direction, and that's my anti-clockwise direction. So moments is our force times distance. So our force is three times our distance, which is 0 0.15, must equal the moments in the clockwise direction. So this force here is trying to pull it this direction about my finger, about that point, which is the clockwise direction. So it's going to equal whatever that force is times that distance, which is 0 0.3. So now if I want to calculate the force, I just divide both sides by 0 0.3. So what I'm doing is 3 times 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.3 equals my force. And just always use your calculator to be safe, but hopefully you know the answer. We do 3 times 0 0.15, and then we're going to divide by 0 0.3, and you're going to get a force then of 1.5. So my force is equal to 1.5 newtons. Okay, so if we look at the example now, let's say we've got a bridge that has a uniform mass of 800, let's say 8,000 kilograms, and let's say it's supported at A and B. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate what the upward force is at A and B. 
So again, we've got a bridge, and let's say it's supported at point A, and it's supported at point B. Let's say we've got a car that's crossing our bridge. There's my car. It's crossing my bridge. And let's say that it is four meters away from point A. Let's say that that's the front tire. Let's say the back tire is 12.5 meters from B. Let's say that there's a force of the front tire of 1,500 newtons. And let's say there's a force of the back tire of 4,800 newtons. Okay, so there's rows of passengers in the back end. Okay, so what we're doing now is calculate what the forces at A and B are. So it says, first thing you need to remember, and a lot of people forget to add this to the diagram, that's why you always lose marks, is it did say it's got a uniform mass. So what the uniform means is it's thinking about a ruler. So if I had a 30 centimeter ruler, I know I could put my finger at the 15 centimeter mark and it's be supported. Because what uniform means is it means that we consider all of the weight, all the mass to be evenly distributed so that the weight always acts at the center. Or the weight always acts at the center of the mass, okay? Because the mass is evenly distributed. So what I know is my bridge here, let's say the question also told me, and so I forgot to add that, between the two tires is going to be a distance of 2.5 meters. So clearly in total, the bridge is 12.5 plus 2.5, 13, 14, 15 meters, 15 plus 4. The bridge in total has a length of 19 meters. So if I'm trying to figure out now where to add the 8,000 kilograms, I know that half of 19 is going to be 9.5. 9918, yeah, 9.5. So what I do is I find 9.5 meters long, and that's where I'm going to say that my 8,000 kilograms is going to act. But again, it's not going to be 8,000 kilograms because we're saying it's a force. So I know to get a force into kilograms, what I need to remember, because this comes up quite a lot, so what we need to remember is that W equals mg. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do 8,000 multiplied by 9.81, because that's the value that we use for g, or the gravitational constant. So what I'm going to do now is I want to figure out again what's happened to A and B. So I take a moments about some certain point, because I know that the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anticlockwise about any point. So for me, I'm probably going to pick point A. So I'm going to put a big X on point A. So for my own sanity and for when I do my math, I know that's what the point that I'm taking my moments about. And I know that moments is force times perpendicular distance. So what I can see here, again, we're trying to find the upwards at B and the upwards at A. If I take moments about A, the force at A is zero distance from my pivot. So anything multiplied by zero gives me zero. So we can just ignore this force at A for right now. What I can see then is this 1,500 newtons is trying to pull my finger around in that direction, right? It would make the bridge move down the way. So it's trying to pull it in the clockwise direction. So what I've got is my 1,500 newtons, and I know it's at a distance of four meters from point A, because moments is force times distance. I also have the 4,800, so I also have to add, because it's sum, 4,800, and it's a distance of four, five, six point five meters away from A. And I also have to add the weight of the bridge. So I'm also adding my 8,000, because that was at mass, times by 9.81 to get it into a weight. And the distance away there from my point A from my finger is, what did we say the half of the bridge was? 19 meters, so the half of my bridge is gonna be 9.5 meters long, times by 9.5. So that's all the moments trying to pull it around in this direction, around in the clockwise direction. So they must equal all the moments trying to pull in the anti-clockwise direction. And the only one trying to pull my finger in the different direction is B. So I'm trying to find the force that B is. So all of this is going to be equal to the force that B times by its distance away from the point that I'm taking moments, which was a 19 meters. So force at B times by 19. So all we've got to do now is simplify. So I just have to add all of this together. So what we're doing is 1,500 multiplied by 4. We're going to add 4,800 multiplied by 6.5. We're going to add 8,000 multiplied by 9.81 to get it into a weight. Multiply by 9.5, it's distance away from point A, which equals, so what I get here is that's going to equal 782760 equals the force at B times by 19. So to find what the force at B is, all I do is divide both sides by 19. So I divide by 19, I figure out my force at B then is going to be 41197.89, two decimal places away safest, newtons because it's a force, okay? And again, because it's quite a lot of time when you're calculating at one time, 
Just make sure you repeat it because you don't want to lose silly marks on your test just because you typed the wrong button in your calculator. So again, just double check it, 1,500 multiplied by 4. Then what we're going to add is our 4,800 multiplied by 6.5. And then we're going to add our 8,000 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 9.5 to get 782760 divided by 19 to get 41197.89 newtons. But remember, we've not finished the question because we want to find the support at A and at B. So what I did was I found out my force at B. So I'm just going to fill it in now. So I know it's 41197.89 newtons. What I could do to find the force at A is I can now take moments about B and do the whole process again. Or I could remember my linear equilibrium, which means the vector sum of the forces is zero or basically all up equals all down. So what I can do now is just say that all up equals all down. So I have this force going up. I have my force at A also going up. And going down, I have 1,500, 4,800, and my 8,000 times 9.81. So the total forces that I've got going down is going to be 8,000 multiplied by 9.81. Add 4,800 from the back tire. Add 1,500 from the front tire to get a total force going down of 84780 newtons. And because I know because of linear equilibrium, up must equal down, this is the only force I've gotten up and my force at A. So to find my force at A, all we have to do is this number, take away this number. So I do this number in my calculator, take away 41197.89. To find out my force at A is 43582.11 newtons. Okay, so now we're going to look at an example where it's not flat, it's going to be at an angle. For angle one, let's say we have a rod attached to a wall by a string. And let's say that the string, not the string, sorry, let's say that the rod has negligible mass, which means we can just ignore its mass. Unlike this example, where we had to include the mass because we want to find out what its weight was, that added right at the middle because it was uniform. This time we're just going to ignore the mass, it's negligible mass. And what we want to do is we want to find what the tension is in the string. Okay, so again, let's say we've got our wall, let's say we've got our rod, and the exam question is going to tell us that we want to find what that tension is. We know the tension is going to be an angle of, let's say, 40 degrees. And let's say that the rod is also going to support some load that's going to have a mass of 9.6 kilograms. And let's say that 9.6 kilograms, the question tells us, is a total distance of 1.8 meters away. And let's say the contact point here, when the string is attached to my rod, is a distance of 1.2 meters away. Okay, so the whole point is I'm trying to figure out what that tension is in that rope. First thing you should realize is it's really hard to do moments if you don't have your distances perpendicular to your forces. So clearly, the only way to do this question with moments is that I need to resolve the tension into some vertical and some horizontal component. Okay, but when I do moments, I don't care about that horizontal component. I only care about the vertical component because moments is always the perpendicular direction. Okay. So what we know is, remember we said, any time you have forces at an angle, the fast way in physics to do it, because you don't have much time, is if you go through the angle, it's always been cosine, F cosine theta. And if you don't go through the angle, if you went against the angle, like if you went against God, you commit sin, went against the angle, this way it's going to be F sine theta, right? And it works anyway. So again, just to show you another example, let's say we have a force here, and we give me this angle. So when I find the vertical, I go through the angle, it's going to be F cosine theta, and I'll just find the horizontal, I didn't go through the angle, so that one's going to be F sine of theta. So in this example here, if I've got tension and I want to find its vertical component, I didn't go through the angle. So if you don't go through the angle, you went against the angle, sin, that's going to be T sine of 40. Okay? And if I wanted to find the horizontal, it'd be T cosine 40. But again, we don't care about it because moments is looking at the perpendicular forces and distances. So again, I'm told it's in contact here with a hinge, so I know there's going to be some force here. So I'm going to choose to take moments about here so I can ignore any forces that are there. 
So what I do now is I'm gonna put my finger on it in my question because it helps me visualize when I'm taking moments about. And again, I know that my moments in my clockwise direction must equal my moments in my anti-clockwise direction. So what I can see is the only thing I've got here pulling my finger in the clockwise direction is this 9.6 kilograms. But again, I have to remember that they give it to me in kilograms and they like to do it in these questions. So you have to remember W equals mg. So it's not really 9.6 kilograms. If I want to put it in weight, it's going to be 9.6 multiplied by 9.81. That's its weight. So its moment is going to be the force, which is 9.6 multiplied by 9.81, times by its distance away, which is 1.8. And now that must equal any moment trying to go in the other direction, the anticlockwise direction. So the only moment trying to go in the anticlockwise direction is my vertical component of the string. So that's going to equal T sine 40 times by the distance it is away from the where we're taking moments, which is our 1.2 meters. So times by 1.2. So now all you need to do is solve for T. So to solve for T, all we have to do is 9.6 times by 9.81 times by 1.8, and we're going to divide by 1.2 sine of 40. So we do that in your calculator. What I'm going to do is 9.6 multiplied by 9.81 multiply by 1.8, and I'm going to divide that all by 1.2 multiplied by the sine of 40. And we get a final answer for T, our tension to be 219.7, sorry, 219.77 newtons. So again, just double check, because it's a lot of your calculator one go. So what we did was our 9.6 multiplied by our 9.81 multiplied by our 1.8 distance must equal the T sine 40 multiplied by the 1.2. So what I did again was 9.6 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 1.8. We divided it by 1.2 and then we divide it by sine of 40. So you get 219.77 newtons. So if you like the video and you find it useful, just remember to subscribe and share with your friends and then write in the comments if there's any other questions you'd like me to do or any topics you would like me to go over.